Hello and welcome to my software engineering deliverable 4 demo prototype walkthrough. This is going to showcase the features of the software we've built, how it works, how to move through it, and generally give you an idea of the work that we've done over the course of this term. So to begin, the system is called the ESP system or the Event Summary Production System. Its purpose is to take um, sales data from small events, store it, and um, produce analytical graphs and figures to show where the event was successful. This is the main menu that will be opened up as seen here when the software starts. So to begin you have three options. You can create an event, you can input sales data, or you can complete an event. For this version of the software there's no pre-established um, completed events or events of that sales data. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you through the whole process of creating an event, updating an event, and viewing the final result. So to begin we have to create an event name and for this example I'm going to use something that I've used throughout to test. It's uh, community sports, not sports, <laughs> sorry, community village event. So to start, we're going to click an event, which will take us to this menu. And before I continue, I want to talk about the look of the ESP system. Um, so normally, in the way we've built it using Windows Forms in C Sharp, you'd be using generic um, layouts, but because we wanted it to maintain this simplistic, edgeless look, we took a completely blank form and built it from scratch, even having to program things like the minimize button, the close button, and the movement of the window. This is shared between forms using inheritance. It's, it was quite fun to build. So this is the window you'll be greeted with when you first start. It is, you can see the employees, the items, the stores, and the managers have nothing in because we've not created any yet. The back button will take you back to the main menu, and this event will be forgotten. Submit button is for when you're completed, but obviously there's no date, so we can't right now. And the name of the event will always appear here. We can't add to it. So first thing we're going to do is create some items. So this is the this is where all of the items will be listed that have been recreated. We have to put in the item name, the price that we bought them at, and the sale price. So the the way the cost that we sold it to the public at. So for the first store that we plan is going to be a sports store just for the kids at the event to have some fun. So we're going to put a football, we're going to say we bought it for £1.20 and we sold it for £4. And we're going to add that. So we're going to go through a few items and we're going to add them all to the list. This isn't just going to be the sports store, this is going to be several stores, but we're going to try and get them all in, so basket four. So we bought that for one, we sold it four. We got a tennis ball. We bought them for 0 0.5, we sold it for four. Because we want to make some nice profit, you know, we bought a rowing machine for those quarantine needs, so we bought that for 40 quid, we're selling it for 60. Okay, so for the next store we want to do a bookstore, so we're going to write up some lovely books, like The Hunger Games. We got it for one, we sold it for three. Obviously to avoid any copyright issues, I'm using, <laughs> I'm using parody names, so 17. We all know. Everyone loves a slight bit of a self-help book. Uh, what else do we want? James Oliver. Wholesale price. We bought them four, and we sold it twelve because everyone knows the cookbooks are always hardback and incredibly expensive. So I'm going to keep it to three items for the first row and all these for the next. So now we're going to add employees. Uh, so we could just use any names like Dave. Then a pay per hour, let's say you got paid eight an hour. Wayne can get paid eight an hour as well. Chris can be the manager of a store so we can get paid 12. Oh, <laughs> 12 
12. Uh, let's see, so there's Karen. Get paid 8. And James can also be the manager of the store, so we can have 12. Okay, so let's go over to the store. So this is, this, as you can see, navigating between them, they're stored. And we can return to the main menu by going back, but don't press it in there, it'll appear here. Staff members, stores, but don't click back again, as all this will be deleted and you'll return to the main menu. So, first thing we're going to create is the used sports goods. So we've got all these under the manager, they appear here as well, but as you can see, so Chris was going to be the manager of the used sports goods store. So as you can see, Chris has been removed from here when I selected him. Uh, we're going to add Dave and Wayne to work here. So as you can see, they're removed from both lists. And for this store, we're going to add the football. We're going to stock 10 footballs. We're going to stock 8 basketballs. We're going to stock a lot of tennis balls because people love to buy them. We're going to stock 4 hockey sticks. Um, we're going to stock one, because let's face it, there's only one person in the community who has one. Okay, so this is the finished event. So the list of staff, the list of items, the assigned manager, and the name of it. So we're going to submit that. So now that's been created as an event. Uh, 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 sorry, a store at the event. So we've got Chris as the manager, these stores, and we're going to do the same for the pre-loved books, Inc. Which is going to be the name of the store, so we're going to have James as the manager, we're going to have Karen as a staff member, we're going to stock 20 copies of the Hunger Games because it's popular with kids, we're going to stock, uh, let's say we stock 30, 40, of, no let's stock 30 because everyone loves a good self-help book and at least 8 of these because they're slightly expensive so it's only fair, so let's up update that, so these two are now a part of the event. So as you can see, James and the pre Book Bookstore Inc is there, there's two stores and the staff room. So what we're going to do now that we're done with inputting the data is we're going to click Submit. And as you can see, that's appeared here. So this section defines um, stores that have got the shell of an event, so they've got all the info, but they haven't actually got any of the sales data, so how many were actually sold. So from there we're going to select it and we're going to go to Input Sales Data. Due to the way that we've built it, it pops up with this notification saying that you, once you proceed ahead, you won't be able to go back until you complete with the sales input to assure that um, data integrity is maintained. So we're going to proceed. These ones aren't movable, they sit in the center of the screen. That was a purposeful design choice to stress how serious it was. So we're going to go to the use sports goods first and we're going to select the store. So what it will do is it will give us way through so while the sales input hasn't while the sorry while the sales data hasn't been put in you can't move between items so we're gonna go to we're gonna say we've sold eight footballs we're gonna go to the next item as you can see again we can't so let's say we sold four of these now we can go between the two because both of them have sales data we're gonna go to the tennis balls we've sold 60 tennis balls we've sold one hockey stick and we we've, we've sold one rowing machine just to just to that neighbour you know would buy it. So now that we're done, that store has completed sales data. So now that there's now there's just this to input. So we've sold five we've only sold four copies of the Hungry Games. We've sold all thirty copies of the Seventeen Habits and we've sold three copies of Jamie Oliver's Guide to Not So Healthy Cooking. Now that we're done we can submit this data and it's been completed so we proceed back to the main menu. As you can see the events moved over to completed events where we can select it to view the sales data. So this is a summary of the whole event. It shows the investment versus profit, comparing the store's profit to each other, and generalized data about the whole event. So you've got an easy summary at the beginning. As you can see, using these two stores, we've made 404 pounds of profit. So first thing we're gonna look at is the stores. So by default, it will go to the first one on the list. It will display all the items, show the profit versus how much money we've put into it, show all of the manager, number of staff, items sold, unique items, so as you can see there's five, and the cost of the stock. So generally there will always be one item that stands out, but that's just because of the way we've done the data input. So the staff members and the inventory. 
So if we go over to the next section, which is employees, we have obviously it's fairly basic. We can just cycle between them, showing the individual staff members what they get paid and why they get paid it. Didn't mean to put Karen only getting paid seven. I'm sorry, Karen. Okay, so for next, we've got all of the items. So this encompasses all items at the entire event. So this shows, let's say if an item is sold at multiple stores, this will generate a graph showing where it was most profitable, showing which store is more effective at selling. This shows, well, the same as last time, the important data, the profit. Sadly, the hockey stick got minus 10. Sorry, hockey stick, or any hockey fans watching. And then we get to the managers, and it shows, let's say if we wanted to look at Chris, it shows that Dave and Wayne work for him. If we look at James, it shows Karen works for him. So this isn't the only way to navigate the system. So if we go to stores, let's say if we wanted to look at the manager, but we didn't want to navigate all the way over, simply what we can do is we can click on the field here. So if we click Chris, it'll open Chris's manager form, showing all of his data. The same is true for much of the rest of the system. So we can return to it by looking at used sports goods. We can look at the football sales profit over here. And this, as we've seen in our testing, greatly increases the flow of the program. It took a few, without being instructed, it took some people a while to find it. But once the, um, you got used to the system, it made, nav made navigating and finding the profit margins much, much easier. So yeah that's the whole system you can move between any of them you can go to employees we can look at the store they work for go to stores can look at individual staff members store items it's yeah this is a system we built we're quite proud of it and there's much room to expand as you can see there's lots more options uh, a key thing we want to include in the next version if we get there is to add the ability to track individual um, staff member sales showing who was the most profitable and who sold the most to reward employees or even fire the ones that aren't selling. <laughs> Sadly, it's not the kindest world in finance. But um, yeah, every single avenue of this software was made to be expandable and we hope you see that when you are reviewing it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the system and yeah, thank you.